Welcome to the AP Podcast. Today we have Terry Placker, CEO and head coach of Team Fidelis. Welcome, Terry. Hey, what's up, brother? Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem, bro. Thanks for, thanks for being on the AP Podcast. So I want to give a little intro to Terry. He has a lot of accomplishments. Um, be a little hype man for a sec. So Terry has 25 IFBB pros. Um, he's coached 181 first place finishes. Um, he has 36 national um, top five placings for his athletes. He has 33 MPC overall championships. Um, total of 543 top five placing at the regional level. That's crazy. Um, he actually has 18 IFBB pros that placed top five in the pro debut. And the grand finale, he's coached three Olympians so far. So far. So um, that's that's an amazing accomplishment, Terry. Um, and today, what I want to do is really go through what got you into coaching you know, what the journey's been like, and then we'll go through some of your tactics, all right? Yeah, man, for sure. Um, dude, so basically, not, not a lot of people even know this whole story, except for some close people, but I was in the Marine Corps from 2006. Uh, so after high school, I, I played college football for a year to junior college, um, got in trouble for partying stuff too, a little bit, and wasn't paying attention, so I got on academic probation. I got, you know, I had a little bad attitude and kind of just like decided I didn't want to go to school anymore. And I came home and my mom and dad were like, there's like nothing for you to do here. So you, you got to figure something out. Mm -hmm. I literally had nothing to, nothing to do and nowhere to turn. So I was like, you know, I'm going to join the military. So I went to the Marines, um, you know, when I was 19. And um, I was there from 2006 to 2014. In that time, I went to Iraq, uh, fought in Iraq, fought in Afghanistan, went to other places and did things. But um, I was in there for, for eight years, about... To about a year and a half before I was supposed to get out, my little brother passed away. And, uh, you know, I had been competing for like a couple of years. And, you know, when my little brother passed away, it was really hard on me. And I was like, man, I needed an outlet to turn to. So I really, really, bodybuilding kind of like saved me. I really got into it. And then, you know, as I was doing that, I was not, you know, as smart with things as I am now. So I was taking, um, I was taking the testosterone boosters, some uh, oral performance enhancers, not injections or anything like that, but oral performance enhancers and things like that. So, I get back from uh, from a show one time, and you know, you know how like when you're at a show, you look all freaking lean, tight, you know, trained. So I'm back in the gym a couple days after the show training, and I'm just wearing like this little, little skinny little, um, I guess uh, a stringer. And, and you know, someone comes up to me, they're like, "Are you taking anything?" I'm like, "Nope." And anyway, so they they uh, they drug tested me for uh, performance enhancements, and you know, and it came back that my testosterone levels were higher than they should be. So you know, the military wanted to kick me out for that. And I was like, that's ridiculous. So they were, they were trying to kick me out. I had to get a lawyer, all this stuff. And I was like, that's so crazy. Dude. I've done all these crazy things for you guys in combat. I've served my country, everything. And you want to, you know, you want to kick me out for some performance enhancements. Um, you know, I don't think that's right. It's not like I was drinking and driving or, or, you know, taking, you know, doing drugs or stuff that other people get in trouble for. So I was like, you know what? You know, when my brother passed away, I just, I turned to the gym, man. I turned to the gym and uh, that was my outlet. And instead of like drinking and going out all the time, I just, you know, I just got, I lost myself in the gym. I just, the weights was like my therapy, man. And uh, to this day, I don't regret it. It all happened for a reason. I ended up getting that rule overturned, got an honorable discharge and was able to get out honorably and everything like that. Cause I was like, I've never even had any kind of, you know, I've never got one in trouble in anything in my eight years. So this one thing at the end, and then they were like, you know what? Just, just let him go. He's good. So anyway, but that, it made me think, man, like, man, I do, you can do all this for somebody. You can do all this in the military. And then all of a sudden your career can just be taken like that. You know, if I would have got a dishonorable discharge, I wouldn't have been able to get a job nowhere. Wouldn't able to been, go, go to school, use my job. Be like, get none of, all of my benefits were even taken from me. I was like, man, all that I did for them. And they were this close to just taking it all from me over just taking, you know, over the counter to stop from boosters, but the raise my test levels. I was like, you know what? Never again am I going to put myself in that situation. And after the Marine Corps, I'm never going to have a job again where someone's telling me what to do, where to be, what to eat, how to do it. You know what I mean? So that's when I started my own business. So during this whole process, I was like, I got to figure something out. I'd always had a love for, for, for bodybuilding and training and competing and stuff like that. And um, so I started, someone asked me to help him get ready for a show. I helped him get ready. He ended up winning the overall, his first show. And then I was like, all right, I'm kind of good at this. So I started studying on it, studying, 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 offered to help a few people for free. And, uh, you know, I figured out I'm kind of good at this. And that's kind of how Team Fidelis was born. And Fidelis is a Latin term for always faithful. Um, so, and it's from the Marine Corps. But, um, 
yeah, man. So that's how I was born. And then I had a couple of friends. I remember Axel and, and Patrick Fogelman. And those guys were at USA's that year. And I didn't get my pro card. And uh, Patrick, I think, placed fourth. And Axel got his pro card. But I remember I was so excited to to see my boys do good and, you know, start turning people pro. And it just made me feel good. And I was like, you know what? I think I'm done competing. I'm just going to I'm gonna help people full time. And, you know, I feel like it's in a, I'm in a good position to be uh, like a leader and a, and a mentor to some of these guys. And I'm all about helping guys out and letting them become coaches. You know, I really think that leaders create leaders, you know. So that's kind of a whole background of how Team Fidelis first started. I just I didn't just wake up one day and say, hey, I'm going to coach. It was, it was a process. Just like I went through some some hard times, man. And uh, I had to bounce back. And then, you know, we're, we're now we're – it's been a rough road, but it's been very rewarding. So now we're here. Well, usually somebody who has as much success as you, there's some purpose behind it. And there's some – there's a story. Uh, yeah. So when did when, when did uh, when did you start this? So I started. I started the, t- the, the whole idea of the team at about the end of 2013, and then um, then it, 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 like I said, man, it just it, honestly, it just took off, man. Like, uh, and you know, first it was hard because a lot of people were like, you know, this kid doesn't have his pro card. I don't want him coaching me, or why do I, why do I trust him? He's not a pro, or this and that. And I was just like, you know what? For me to get my pro card, I would have to be so like selfish and just worry about myself some people there's other coaches that are successful pros and successful competitors and they and they coach people but if you look at the most successful coaches in the industry they don't compete and they have because it, when bodybuilding is a selfish sport you got to be all about you you got to be about what you want to do you can't have anyone mess up your meal times you know all the other bullshit that goes with it so you have to be certainly focused i can't be doing cardio and having low carb days and stuff like this. When I got 200 people asking me questions, I need to be focused on them. So that's why, uh, yeah. So, but anyway, when I started turning people pro left and right and started having winners left and right, you know, that kind of just shut people up. So. Right. Yeah. Let the work do the talking, right? (laughs) Yes, sir. (laughs) I love it. Well, um, I guess what I kind of want to go into with you is because you are managing like 200 athletes at one time. Um, I want to know, and I'm sure my viewers and your viewers want to know is maybe how you can, uh, how you structure things, how you go through and, uh, really evaluate what they need, um, and how you kind of put a plan together for them. Well, so I have all my athletes pretty much send their check-in photos and progress pictures and check-ins on Thursdays. I do my best to work on them on Friday and Saturday. It takes me about two and a half days. So on Fridays, I'll work on them a little bit, um, get the outline going. And then Saturdays, I just wake up early and dig deep. If I can get them all done Friday, I will. But sometimes I have so many and then, you know, I got personal stuff going on or, you know, I got my son or I got something going on or an event to be at. So I sometimes get them to them on Sunday or Monday. That's very rare. But I try to get it to them at least by noon on Saturday. That way they have sufficient time to meal prep. And, you know, it's just there's no better feeling than having everything ready on Sunday to go for the week. And I know when I was competing, I would hate it whenever, you know, if my coach sent me my plan late or something and I'm like, man, it's Monday night. I got to do this or Sunday night. Now I got to do all this. So it's just, I'm trying to think about how it was for me and I want them to, to I'm going to be, help them be set up for success as well. So, but that being said, my coaching strategies are pretty simple, man. It's just, uh, I like to give them their first phase with a lot of food and everyone says the same thing. How am I going to eat all this food? I'm like, I promise you in a week, you're going to be hungry. <laughs> so they start, they start rubbing, man. They start eating their meals. They're like, you know, I get the text message that I'm always waiting on that text. I can't get my meals. Done. I'm like, okay, well, if you need a place for one meal with a shake, you can. But just keep eating. Two weeks later, three weeks later, coach, I need more food. I'm burning through this. Right? I'm like, right? that's just because you're not used to eating that much, you know. But, you know, a good amount of protein, carbs, fats, they put on their, their macros and their, and their height and weight. Um, a lot of, I, you know, it's funny. A lot of my clients, are rich, they actually really don't like to go off macros. They just want me to tell them what to eat. I have some people that like to go off macros and stuff, but my belief is um, to get actually shredded to the bone. I'm not saying you have to do bro science, but I just don't really believe in following macros up into a show. Um, I think it's perfect for off season, but um, every champion that I've had, every everybody that's got their pro card, I mean, people that I know, friends of mine that are pro at Olympia level, I mean, you ask the top guys in the world, how's it feel to win? They're like, you had to suffer a little bit. I think everyone has to suffer a little bit not in a non-healthy way, but you, there's a little bit of suffering that goes on to be a champion. And, um, you know, that's, yeah. that's basically, that's, 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 that's my whole thought on that, man. Yeah, no, no. And I actually, I a hundred percent agree with you. Um, cause a lot of coaches, especially it's more like, I feel like on the natural side of things where they really do the macros and if you fit your macros and stuff, but I feel like 
um, for competing for a show, at least in my success and coaching others, um, I've never done the macros because I feel like there's more. It might be bro science to people, but there's more that goes into it than just hitting your macros, right? Um, yeah. And so I, I see a lot better results from having literally a structured plan, eat it day in and day out until the phase adjusts. And it seems like people can follow that easier too because when you're doing your macros, you're thinking about all these foods that you want to eat, and so it makes you want to eat more, in my opinion. When you have yeah. something out in front of you, you're just like, all right, I don't have to think about it. Let me just eat this shit and get the results, right? Exactly, 100%, man. And then and, uh, that's just, like I said, that's just the base. Like I said, I don't have any competitors that want macros, especially during the prep. Off-season, yeah, but during contest prep, no, man, we keep it pretty strict. But I'm, I'm a real big believer. People call Team Mills the cheat meal team. I'm all about giving guys refees and cheat meals. Like, if it's the holidays, unless you're doing your peak week, I don't care. Like, if it's, like, Christmas, Thanksgiving, you know, your birthday, you want to have a cheat meal, dude, go ahead. Even Super Bowl Sunday, I make sure every every client, eat what you want today or have this meal today. I just, you know, it just takes the time. You can't be lazy. If you actually design the program around that refeed day, everybody can. There's no reason why you should be Christmas Day, like, not be able to enjoy it with your family. I mean, or, you know, Thanksgiving, not to enjoy it with your family. As long as you're smart with it and you, you schedule for around that day of eating, you can, you can, you can do a lot of things that you don't think you can. You just have to have a coach or you yourself have to be smart in what you're doing and how to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I agree. hundred percent. A couple questions that go with that. Um, shit. One is for the refeed. Um, oh, the psychological benefits. That's what I was going to say is I feel like, yeah, the cheat meal, you can get the extra calories, maybe help energy, you'll bring your energy levels back up, fill your glycogen or whatever. But I think the psychological part plays such a huge role with the cheat meal, being with your family and not stressing about, you know, eating out of your Tupperware. Yeah, because it's supposed to be, you want it to be, you want the fitness thing to, to be a lifestyle. And um, especially with cheat meals, man, every time I have someone, a client do it or refeed day, they drop with the next two days, they drop their weights down, they feel better, they look better. And then it's all like, okay, now that gave me a boost. Now I can go hard the next two or three weeks, four weeks, and then, I, you know, coach can give me another one, you know. And, um, you know, it's, it's just that thing of it's, it's, just, it's just a mind fuck, man. Like, you didn't, who wants to fucking eat broccoli and chicken every day for 12 weeks? Fuck that. Like, that, it's just it's not what you want to do, man. Like, yeah, no, so I, it's, I'm not saying eat like crap every day, but it's okay to have something here and there, you know, during your prep. Yeah, no, I agree 100%. Um, second question was – there's kind of some different definitions of uh, a cheat in a refeed days, I guess. Like if you go through one person I reference is like a John Meadows. He kind of says a difference between a uh, refeed is primarily carbohydrates, like a huge spike in carbs rather than like a cheat day. It's just whatever you want. Yeah. Do you incorporate. Do you, do you have your clients actually try to stick to carbs or a certain? Yeah. So on their cheat meals, I'll tell them like, Hey, keep it. Hey, I want you to go have a meal, whatever you want. Keep it under 4,000 calories, keep it under this many calories, whatever. I mean, if you think about it, if you say, Hey, I'm going to have a cheat meal, 3,000 calories. How am I going to do that? Dude, you get two burgers from in and out and a milkshake. Boom. 3,000 calories, you know? So, um, but on a repeat day, I try to tell them this. I say, Eat what you want, but stay away from desserts. Pretty much like if you have a cheat meal, I don't mind dessert. But on a refeed day, I don't want you eating cookies and cake all day. I want you to at least food has some nutrient, like nutrition value to it. So, you know, a lot of, a lot of people for refeed days, man, they tell me, I'm like, hey, what'd you eat? They're like, dude, I want to all you can eat sushi, you know, burger and fries and pizza. But here's the thing, dude, and it's, it's a mind fuck to the clients too because they think that on the refeed day, they're going to be able to eat all this food. Here's what happens every time. They wake up that morning so stoked. Go to IHOP, Denny's, pound a shitload of pancakes and everything else. And they're like, coach, I can't fucking eat anymore. So then they're full until like 3 o'clock, eat something else, and then eat something. And they're like, dude, I only ate like two, two huge meals that day because their stomach has shrunk. Mm -hmm. So they think they're going to just be able to eat food all day long, but they're really not. So it kind of – I say have a refeed day, but they're, they're taking a, a surplus in calories, but they're not eating all day long like they think they would because they just can't handle all that food anymore. So Yeah, no, I see the same exact thing, and personally too, it's just – you think and you're just so psyched up to have all this stuff and then you go and you're like god damn it can't even yeah. finish. unless you're like me and then you can't eat all that food that's why i don't look like my clients anymore <laughs> but uh, i've mastered the fact of eating a whole bunch of food and being able to hold it down so and it's very rare how i have accomplished that so well that kind of goes into uh maybe how you uh peak some of your athletes some people like to do like a dirty 
um, dirty peak. And some people like to obviously front load or, or, or back load using um, fun foods, you would call it. Uh, yeah. do you like to, how do you like to peak your athletes? Well, every peak week is different. But, you know, here the thing is, Everyone says, like, you know, my coach gives me burger and fries, this and this. Like, if you're not – or, you know, I really, first of all, like, I don't really believe in a lot of diuretics. Mm-hmm. Me neither. Um, if, you're, if your athlete's already shredded, I don't really think – if you're shredded to the bone, I don't really think you need a diuretic. It's just going to flatten you out. And here, here's the thing with diuretics. People, they take them, and then they wake up the next day shredded. They only work for four or five hours. So they wake up the next day shredded in the morning. And by the time they hit the stage five or six hours later, they look washed out. Um, if you're first of all, if you're not lean enough going into peak week or before the show, don't fucking do the show. Like if you if you don't feel like you're ready, peak week's not some miracle thing that's all of a sudden you lose all your body fat. You should be lean going into it already. You know, it's just water, right? It's just water. Yeah, it's just water. <laughs> if it's jiggling like this, if it looks like me, it's not water. <laughs> but um, no, pretty much. Yeah, I do. I do like a little dirty meal. I don't like to give them a lot of steak before. Um, the night before the show because it takes too long to process and digest. But yeah, typically not no fries because the green, but a burger, double meat, single meat just depends on who, how big the athletes are, like how lean they are, you know. But I don't mind giving them something dirty in, in the morning. Uh, all my guys, all my guys, they eat pancakes in the morning. I mean, I just I, I believe in that dirty meal, and they all come out vascular popping. And like I said, if they weren't lean enough to do that, they wouldn't be doing the show in the first place. I push them back until they're ready. Yeah. But um, I mean, I've always man, I have this crazy thing where. I, I haven't done it because I'm kind of scared to, but I want to just have a one day where I just let my athlete just pig out the night before a show and see how it looks in the morning. I, I'm too scared to do it because I don't want to spill over, but you know how you, you, see, you see guys do shows, and I'm still trying to figure this method out, like how to exactly bring this in, but no matter what, man, even when I used to compete, I would look good on stage, but then after I'd get off the stage, eat that night, the next day on Sunday, I'd wake up looking freaking full, shredded, amazing. I know what's happened to you. I know you've seen it with your athletes. Everybody, they, they you, you take the sickest selfies next day. You're just huge in the gym. And I'm just like, man. And some of my athletes are like, man, Coach, maybe I should just grub out on Friday night and then wake up Saturday looking like that. And I'm just – I'm kind of scared to do it because I don't want to spill over if they got a show on the line. But, mm-hmm. I don't know, that's just, that's just something that always just baffles my head, like how, how that happens. So Yeah, no, no, no. I see that a lot too. Um, and it kind of depends, right? Like what I see is – or here, let me explain. So what I do with my athletes, it kind of depends on if they're lean enough. I usually want them shredded, ready for the show a week out at least, right? And yes. then kind of coast into the show, try to lower some cortisol, just like kind of coasting in. Um, and I kind of – I like to front load a little bit. And then that way if, if somebody isn't getting enough on the front load, then I can back load not so hard. But, yeah. but I, I like – I've heard of coaches doing what you're talking about is because yeah, when you have that huge impulse and all that sodium and everything uh, and you wake up and you're just like, Holy shit, you know, vascular shit. There's just a difference. Cause I think that if you're lean enough, you can do it. If you're like super shredded, if you're not, you might become a little watery. Right. Yeah. You but, have to be to a certain level of leanness to do something like that. And um, like I said, not it, it depends. Like if my guys, most of them, do, all of them, well, they do the pancakes and stuff. But the amount that they get and stuff, it depends on how they look. But like I said, if if you guys aren't lean, like they aren't lean, I'm not putting them in the show. Like they need to be ready like a week out. Because here's the thing: while everyone else is killing themselves during magical peak week trying to get ready, my guys are just chilling close. I don't want my guys doing two cardio sessions a day during peak week. I want them. You're already tired as is. So my guy, my guys pretty much go like a zero carb the first two or three days or, you know, no more. It depends. I've never had, we go over hundred grams of carbs for two days. Then I start loading them slowly. I start loading them throughout the day. Thursday, I have them send me pictures every two or three hours. And then Friday is a heavier load. I just, I just don't want to go 500 grams of carbs on Thursday and a thousand on Friday. Cause you just, I don't want you to oh, spill over. If you, you can always feed someone until the minute they step on stage. But once you freaking spill over, they're just going to bring that back. There's no diuretic that's going to bring it back. Yeah. There's, there's nothing you can do to, to, to bring that back once you just, once you, you just you spill it out. So. Yeah. No, I, I like the conservative kind of approach, too, rather than play the extra 5% and blow it all. So that, that front load you're talking about, I've, I've, I've done some study on that. I've never tried it, but it is, it is interesting. And like I said, it depends. I think that's good for it depends on how lean you are, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I've, I've kind of had to do personally myself with my uh, first coach. We've done both approaches because I'm just a freaking huge carbohydrate oxidizer. I mean, I just burn through that shit. Like I'm more of an ecto. And uh, 
we did a front load and it was like, he's like, damn, I want to bring you fuller so you can look bigger. Right. And I'm like, okay. And so then we ended up having to just back load. I did three shows in a row and he had me just snack, just fucking eating as much Skittles and fucking just, just straight sugar as much as I yeah. could downing salt on the back load. And that was, it, it was painful, but I mean, it made me look almost probably, you know, a good amount bigger just from uh, the back load. So kind of all depends. Like you said, it's crazy what you can do to like manipulate. And then like, everybody's different. Everybody's different, man. And, and you know, to, to, to any athlete, the thing I stress is listen to what your coach says. If you don't like him or her, or you don't like what they say, get a new coach after that show, but don't have a coach and then ask 50 other people, reach out to people on Instagram, reach out to other coaches, reach out to other athletes. Hey, what are you doing? Cause this is what I'm doing because everybody's different. You're going to stretch this up out, and then you're going to start trying to – if you start trying to do a little bit of what this person says, a little bit of what this person says, a little bit of what that person says, he's going to fuck everything up. So stick with the program. If you don't like it, get someone new after. You know, that's my advice to, to mo mostly new new competitors out there, you know, who are going to be around for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess that was good shit on the nutrition. I like that. Um, what about training? You uh, – what kind of training? You like to lift heavy all the way through? Do you like to cut it down, maybe increase the Dude, the same thing with me since I really don't train people one-on-one. -on -one. I like right through workout programs, and I have uh, one of my assistants. He's a strength and uh, – he's like my strength and conditioning coordinator. He writes – I have him. I'm just like, okay, these are the kind of workouts I want. I want you to write them all down, make them like file organized for me, so that way I can just focus strictly on diets, and you break down the workouts for me. You know, because it's hard to do all that for – my mom's probably like 30 times. It's hard, to, it's hard trying to do all that um, – for so many people by yourself. So I'm like, okay, I need you to build the workout programs. This is what I want. I'm going to be pumping out diets all day. It's what I do all day, dude. I'm on the computer all the time. There's never a day that I'm not on the computer doing something where even if I'm on vacation, I always got to check some emails here and there. But, um, as far as the workouts, man, I really do. I, I love, I love, uh, like supersets, drop sets, um, stuff like that. But I, I still think like, I can't tell them, Hey, you need to bench this for 12 reps. Cause I'm not feeling what you're feeling. I say, as long as you can do it, at the right form. You know, I don't want you in there grabbing fifties and then, you know, crawling all kinds of fucked up ways when you can do a 30 and do that perfect isolation, isolated moves and, you know, make the, make, make the muscle burn the right wing instead of just throwing your fucking back out. But, um, I start with the basic, the, the, the basic workouts and then I go to, you know, super sets, drop sets, stuff like that. But, uh, always, always hard, man. The workouts are long. I'd rather, I'm a lot of my guys, they'd rather train for freaking an hour and a half then do a 30 minute workout and more cardio. I got guys that want to lift for two hours and do less cardio. They just, you know, lifting to me is funner than just walking on the treadmill or doing Stairmaster. So I always try to make some of the workouts at the end, like when they're about four, six, between six weeks out to four weeks out. Um, unless they, I start doing like higher level training, um, you know, like drills, um, you know, speed training, um, their weights, they're doing a bunch of circuit training and it's just cause it's like a cardio in itself. Then they're not doing a bunch of cardio after they work out. It's pretty much getting the cardio during the workout. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. You, you start like hit training and stuff like that all, about four to six weeks out? Yeah, it, it just depends. I don't start at the beginning of the prep because at the beginning of the prep, they're going to start dropping just from eating clean, from cleaning up their diet and doing some cardio, just walking on the treadmill. Your body's going to keep dropping and dropping just from cleaning, cleaning up what you have been doing. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when you start, you know, when they're about six weeks out, you know, four weeks out, you start wanting to really attack that stubborn fat. Then we'll start throwing some thermogenics in there if they need it and start that hit training and, and you know, high volumizing, you know, high, high reps. And, uh, but just so you know, if you want to get shredded, you don't have to do high reps with less weight. That's actually a fucking retarded method. You, you can still lift heavy and hard and get fucking shredded. So, uh, you know, I see, I see people that are like, I'm time to get lean. I'm about to just start just doing 50 reps a light weight. I'm like, that's, that does nothing. I don't know who came up with that, but in my experiences with, you know, over five years of training, um, you know, I just, I believe if you train hard and heavy, but the right way and with good form, you can do whatever, pretty much whatever you want. You'll get lean. It's not what you're eating too. So. Interesting. So, um, that's where we're probably a little different. Um, do you like to leverage the calories more or the energy expenditure more? Energy expenditure. Me too. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And so I guess where we're different a little bit is, I actually will start very slow, like very slow, but like eight, 10 minutes of like hit mm -hmm. very beginning of prep just to see how in the off season should have done this too, but to rev up the metabolism and try to just feed them a shit ton of calories 
And so then we can pull back the gas, you know what I mean? So um, that's interesting though, that you like to increase that training volume and then six to six, six weeks out, six weeks out, put in the hit. And you don't even start the thermos until six weeks, you think? Yeah, because I, I don't want them running. Because like I said, to me, I found out with my athletes that if you're just eating clean and training hard, you're going to drop weight. You're going to drop body fat. I don't, you know, I don't want them riding their 12 weeks out to hop on a bunch of thermogenics and because you don't know if it's the diet that's losing the weight or that. And then, you know, they're all tweaked out all the time and all, all, all these stimulants and everything. And then by the time you do 12 weeks of running thermogenics, man, it, it'll jack you up. You know, there's – Jack up your sleeping pattern, and then your body starts getting used to it. I don't want their body used to it. I want them to do it at the very end when they actually need it, so it'll hit their body the right way. And like, think you, you, you've been prepping for 12 weeks, 15 weeks. The last four weeks, last five weeks, you're like, oh, I'm fucking tired. Start taking thermogenics, get that extra push. You know, throw those pre workouts in, and then uh, you know, it's, it's, it's. I think it's a little bit better for them. Mm-hmm. And I've I've found good success with that. Mm-hmm. Um, I've heard of people doing it the way you do, and you know, I respect that. And you know, it does work. I've actually done that for a few people. But 90% of what I do is, is the way I'm explaining it. I don't like to throw all that in the very beginning. I like to kind of save it through mid or day yeah. towards the end of the prep. Yeah. I, it's it, it, gas. Exactly. I like it because it's more of like you're playing aces is what I like to call it. You're playing aces at the right time. So you're not putting, putting all of your aces in the pot in the very beginning and then you got nowhere to go. The exactly. only thing you do is just drop your calories more, but then it's just like yeah. That's, that, that's what you want to do. A lot of a lot of coaches. Everyone's a fucking a coach now. I, I Instagram. I see a dude do a show. Next thing you know, he's a fucking coach, which is cool. I'm not worried about the competition because I'm I'm good at what I do. So yeah. whoever wants to be a coach, can be a coach. If you're good at what you do, you shouldn't be worried about anyone else. Yeah. But the thing is, is like uh, you know, a lot of young coaches, new coaches, they want to just keep dropping your calories, especially the girls. You can't yeah. fucking do that. The idea to get lean is just take more food away. If you carb cycle, if you you know, take this out and put this in it. You know, if you're if you're if your fats go lower, uh, you know, something needs to raise, or if your carbs go up, the protein can come down, or if the fats go the fats go um the fats go lower, the protein go up or the protein, you know, it's something some if one thing goes up, the other thing needs to come down. You don't need to, you know, just take everything away from you. You know what I mean? A lot of people they just wanna be like, Okay, some lose weight, eat less food, do more cardio. That's the fucking stupidest thing. I feel so bad when I see girls they could do they do their first show and they get they get so lean and like, dude, that'll work the first time. I was gonna now say, you're gonna fucking get metabolic damage. You need to have a coach who knows what he's doing. Do your research. Ask them, dude. I have I have people that are like, yo, I reached out to like five of your competitors before I came to your team. I'm like, hey, thank God that I know what I'm doing and that you know my clients trust me because you know I never get I never get any business. But yeah. you know, I, I just feel really bad when I see bikini girls. A lot of bikini girls do that, man. They get they get screwed over. They get a coach who just runs them down. So. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of good coaches across the industry. I just think people need to do their research and get them. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think that now there has been a lot more, like a lot more bad coaches coming in that just you know put them at severely low calories, put some clean in, maybe some T three, and then say, hey, there you go, um, and then it kind of destroys them, like you're talking about. Um, but I think there is a lot of good coaches, like you said. Um, yeah. I don't think that there's. Like, I have nothing against, you know, cleaning all that stuff. I'm just saying, like, with the females and doing, like, you know, 500 or less calories a day, and they're like, you know, it doesn't make sense to me. I'll get girls that come to me, they're like, you know, I did my first show, I was lean, I gained all this weight. I'm like, well, let me see your last. They're like, I was eating, like, 900, 800 calories a day, doing two hours of cardio. I'm like, damn. I'm like, now we have to reverse diet you. Like, we have to spend, like, six to eight months, like, doing a smart reverse diet, introducing your body to carbs again, like, getting your, resetting your metabolism, fixing your hormone, your hormones, your you know, your, um, your thyroid issues, if you have any, because, you know, some, some of them may even need to see a doctor because I said, you know, what happens is girls gain this weight and then they, they're no matter how much cardio and training they're doing, they're not losing it. It's actually getting worse. You don't really see that problem a lot with guys because we're built different, but with females, man, they're so sensitive. You got to be smart. I don't train a lot of bikini girls. I'm kind of, I don't really like to train that many chicks, but the ones I do, I really try to pay attention because I don't want any of their bodies messed up, you know? Yeah, no, that's, it's funny because you say that because that's exactly how I am. Uh, I'm really confident in men's, men's physique and in classic probably. Uh, that's where I've had most of my clients for com- uh, competing. But uh, I've had bikini competitors come in and it just makes me nervous because it's like I don't – I'm not a female. I don't know how – I've never been through that process. Exactly. I've never seen a plan go through that process too. It can't be that much different in the sense of, you know, the only thing that's a huge difference is the hormones and stuff, right? But I don't. I'm. I'm the same with you because I don't. Yeah, want I, don't to be honest, I, I only have a, yeah, I only have a bikini. 
Yeah, I only have a few bikini, but I'm, I'm, I don't mind coaching figure girls because my figure girls, they train like my Miss Physique guys. Yeah. Pretty much the same kind of workouts, you know, and, and they, you know, but, you know, I just, I don't know. Bikini, there's a lot of good bikini coaches. Um, I'm not big on coaching bikini. I will. But, I mean, I'm more comfortable with men's physique, classic, and, uh, and, and obviously, you know, bodybuilding mm-hmm. and, and figure. But uh, bikini is just something – I'm not that good at bikini, I don't think. Everything else, I fucking knock it out of the water. <laughs> nice. Nice. So, so nutrition, uh, you kind of outsource your training. Um, let's see, what else? So, I guess, let's see, you're, you're um, with uh, – what supplement company um, – who are you affiliated with? I was, I was with Muscle Sport. Great company. I was with them for three years. They did a lot of good for me. Did a lot of good for them in return. All my clients were taking their products. But I took a step down. I didn't renew my contract. So, um, you know, I got some big things. I have my own line coming out. Uh, that will be ready around June. So I'll promote that later. Talk about that later when it's time. But, um, yeah, some big things coming out. I just wanted to bring my own product in and do like that. But like I said, we'll, uh, I'll promote that and talk about that around June time for you. Awesome. Good for you, man. Good for you. Yeah. It sounds like there's a lot of, a lot of big things coming. Um, you've been a lot hustling. Of work, man. <laughs> a lot of work. A lot, a lot, a lot of work and no sleep. A lot of work yeah. and no sleep. I was going to say, like, tell us, give us a, an overview of a successful prep coach or successful coach in general. You know, how hard you're hustling. Like, what does it take to be successful in this, this arena? Honestly, man, you got to care about your athletes. You got to care about your athletes more, more than yourself, you know? And, you know, there's no reason, like, you know, a lot of coaches do it, man. You just, you get out of shape. Like, I get out of shape. I'm, I was out of shape more from coaching than, you know, than competing, obviously. But I was like, there's no reason. So now I try to, like, not keep it in balance. The, the, the best way for me to do it is wake up, like, at 4 or 5 in the morning, get a meal in, go work out. That way, the rest of the day, I'm literally going to be on the computer. I'm not on the computer. Like, I've got... 18 text messages blowing up since we've been on this thing because, you know, just clients, clients having questions, which is fine. I tell them, my clients, I just tell them they can text me, call me, whatever. I'll get right back to them if I don't answer. They can email me. I don't have it where you can just only email me. You know, I believe that, you know, your clients don't want to talk to your computer. Sometimes they want to talk to you. You know, I got clients that call me. Sometimes they have personal issues or break up with their girlfriend or something. Like, need some advice, you know, okay, middle of the night, hit me up, bro. We'll, you know, we'll talk it out. I've been through you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm no relationship guru, but I mean, if you need someone to talk to, I'm, I'm here, you know, I feel like people are just so in it to just make the money. And I'm like, you know, don't focus on making money, be a good coach, help your clients out, you know, you know, be there for them and you know, everything else will take care of itself. But, um, I think to be a good prep coach, you have to honestly like take care of your clients, but also you got to take care of yourself. If I don't take care of myself and sometimes I take a day off or rest or something like that you can't pour from an empty glass thing else to give so it's, it's it's a little give and take but the main thing is caring about your clients and caring about what you do and like i said if you're just in this trying to make money or be some kind of fitness guru or whatever you're probably gonna last long but if you know people can tell if you actually care about your job and your clients can tell they can tell when you give a fuck about what they're talking about so you know my advice to them is actually give a fuck and care and do the research if you don't know something research it clients hit me up about hey I heard this little diet method, this and this, or can I mix this with this? I'm like, I don't know. Let me look. I got some books here. You got, you got Google. I'll research. If I don't know, I'll ask somebody. I'll, you know, Omar Ventura, he's one of my mentors. I'll be, hey, Omar, you heard of this? Or, you know, I'll reach out to other coaches. Hey, have you guys heard of this? Like, you know, everyone, I feel like if we, everyone like works together and, you know, you know, help each other out, I don't see, there's so much room for everyone to be successful. I don't see why we shouldn't, you know? I love it. No, no, I think that there's so much uh, people trying to take down top dogs or take down people to make them come up. But in reality, there's so much there's so many people dude especially even in the fitness realm of competing there's so many people that everybody should be able to win i mean yeah. there's plenty of money there you know what i mean so yeah. I think that's badass dude um well i guess kind of wrapping up then give us a couple things one when you're looking for a coach what should you look for and also what would be the, the best word of advice you could give to somebody going into their first show? All right. When you're looking for a coach, try, I would stay away from coaches who, if you're always posting, sign up for my team, sign up for my team, 12 weeks, $99. I don't think there's a good marketing strategy. If you look at my Instagram, any of my, my personal or my business page, never once have you ever seen me say, join Team Fidelis, please sign up, please sign up. I think when someone's always telling people, sign up, sign up, sign up, 
it gets a little annoying and then your page just is like one big huge thing of advertisement. It looks like all you're trying to do is make money. So you actually care. I get clients by just posting fucking transformations. Hey, look at this, 12 weeks, boom, 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 boom. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. You can go to my website, you can go to my Instagram, just scroll through since 2013. You're gonna see some amazing transformations all over the page. And I just believe like letting your work speak for itself. When you're looking for a coach, reach out, reach out to that coach. If he doesn't respond to you, you know, within a timely manner, I would pick someone else. If you want to, you want to have a coach, ask some of his clients. Reach out to him in direct message. Hey, is this a good coach? How do you, how do you like his work ethic? You know, you know, does he get back to you on time? How's the thing? I like I said, if you, if you just go with someone who's like, oh, these people have five million followers, I want to coach them. Probably not even that person doing your diet. Have a coach who knows what the fuck he's doing, what he's talking about. Do your research. Like I said, there's a lot of good fucking coaches out there. You know, I'm not going to sit here and be like, everyone come to me. I hire somebody, ask questions. Gotcha. Gotcha. Awesome. No, yeah, I agree 100%. Um, and I guess kind of last thing is, is what would be your number one piece of advice for somebody uh, trying to compete in their first show? In your first show, man, just – Learn what you can. Listen to your coach. It's okay to like hear people's opinions, but don't try to do what everyone else, a little bit of what everyone else is saying. If you think about it, you're trying to uh, your mom's cooking a pie, an apple pie, a pecan pie. If she's taking a little bit of other ingredients that don't go in it and make it, you're not gonna have that fucking that, that apple pecan pie at the end of the at the end of it. Whatever you you know, it takes certain things to 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 be successful. Listen to your coach. Do what he's saying or what she's telling you, and then like I said, if you don't like them. If you don't like the, pro the, the process, then pick another. You can always change. There's hundreds of codes. You can switch to someone else the next time. But also, stick to the program. Stick to the program so that way the worst feeling in the world, I've done it before, man. Get on stage. I've been cheating on my diet. I come in looking 75%. You can't blame no one with yourself. The worst thing in the world is standing up there right before they do the first call out, and you're like, fuck, dude, did I do everything I know I was supposed to do? Or you're backstage pumping up, and you're like, dude, I don't look my best, or I don't look as tight as that dude over there, or I don't look as tight as her over there, you know, you know. Because you knew that you didn't, you didn't give it your best. If you really gave it your hundred percent, your best effort, and did everything you're supposed to do when you get on stage, even if I got last call, it's like fucking dude, I tried my best, you know. But you don't ever want to wonder what would have happened or what would I look like if I would have done everything I was supposed to. And your first show is is so hard to stick to that diet, the, the you know, as faithful as you can, but to try your best to do it because once you get that down, it's it's a piece of cake, you know. And just have fun with it, man. We're so blessed to have the NPC and IFBB and, you know, have organizations that you can go compete in. So have a good time because, you know, no matter if you're shredded, I've seen guys that are shredded get beat by guys who weren't as shredded because they had that charisma personality on stage. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just have fun with it, smile and fucking get fucking shredded. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, no, I agree hundred percent. It's a lot of it is not just about, you know, how big you are, but how shredded you can get. And then your swagger, right? Uh, especially men's physique. Yeah. Um, but awesome, man. Well, Hey, I loved all of this. Uh, such great information for not only my viewers, but probably for yours too. Um, I think there's a lot of truth. There's a lot of fallacies. There's a lot of stuff out there that people don't know or how to start or they think they should be doing something. Um, but I think that you put a lot on the table. So I want to thank you for being on the podcast today. I hope we can do it again. Um, yeah. Well, but thank so, you, thank you, bro. Thank you. And, and uh, from behalf of me and the whole Team Bedellas family, thank you for having me. And, you know, good luck to you and your team. And, you know, if whoever's listening to this, follow this kid, young opportunity, young hustler. I've had the chance to sit down and talk with him. He's going to be a millionaire by the time he's 25. <laughs> Bless. <laughs> Put that well, down somewhere and fucking read it every day, and I promise you. you can I'm going to write it. it down right now. <laughs> Put that on your fridge. I want to be a millionaire. Hey, fuck it. Set a high goal, right? Even if you don't make it all the way and you fall short, you're still in the top. I'm talking about set make high goals. Because if you fall short, you're still in the top area. Don't set some bullshit ass goal. Like, set a high. If you fall short, fuck it. You're still in the top range. Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up uh, Terry's Instagram, all of his information, uh, email and stuff in the, in the bio for this uh, video podcast and also for the audio I'm going to put in his stuff also so you guys all my viewers go follow him he has some amazing transformations he's preps some top, top notch guys he knows what he's doing so anyways man it was great seeing you uh, talking with you and we'll talk to you guys next time bye right, brother alright so oh shit <laughs>